Hiya. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are back on this shitter again. Uh, for some MOT preparation, because we've got, I'd say it's a slight issue, but it's probably more than a slight issue. So if we get underneath the shitter, we can see that we have a brake pipe that's fucked. And it's so fucked that it's actually weeping. So it must be pitted to a point. It mustn't have been leaking for long because I've not had to top up the brake fluid, but it is actually leaking slightly. So this video, what I'm going to be doing is, or what I'm going to be attempting to do, because I've never actually done this before with this type of brake pipe tool, is I'm going to be linking a piece of copper into that joint there, taking that out, struggling taking that out for a bit, and then I'm going to join it to the steel round here. And what's going to make that more interesting is this has got coating on it and I forgot to bring a fucking Stanley knife to take that off. So that could be a bit of a bastard. Well, let's just see how we get on. But let's start with this end first. And really wonderful thing if you're doing brake pipes is that you get brake fluid all down your arms and everything, which is just lovely. Let's try and cross the end of that to try and stop it from pissing out as fast. Right, so now I've cut that off, as you can see. There's a reason why I've done that. Put a bit of wood of 40 and then ideally but probably not be able to actually undo that and as suspected um that which was once either an 11 or a 10 i can't remember um 10 milli doesn't fit anymore because it's rotten away so i knocked a nine onto it but it's still not undoing because it's really tight so next thing is gonna have to be to carefully apply a little bit of heat whilst remembering that we are right next to a fuel tank so be very very careful yes yeah i don't know if you noticed them but i use the old uh tighten it up a little bit first trick which is favorable when you do shit like this well i find it anyway so let's move that shit from there, like so. And we can see that we are left with a fit in there, which will take a new one of them. So next, we need to do something with this. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've bent that a little bit because um, it was just pissing fluid all down my sleeve, which was wanking me off a bit. So I bent it over there while I was uh, doing that other fitting. So next, like I said, I'm going to join it, probably about here, or maybe about here, not just, not about here. So I need to get rid of the coating, the plastic coating off this brake pipe. And I think that this is going to be the only option, the way to do it. So I need to score it all the way around, like so. Then, hopefully, when I do cut the end off, now I'm not sure entirely how well this is going to show up on camera because, once again, I haven't got any kind of tripod, but I've given that a split off. I've taken that out of there, that little clip, and now I'm going to cut the pipe where I'm going to put. Now it would be better if I did have some sort of pipe cutter for this, but not got one of them, so that will have to do. Um, just make sure there's no burrs on the end of there and all that sort of shit. And next, I need to flare it, well, put an end on it and flare it, which consists of one of them. And it would appear that I haven't actually taken enough of the plastic off. Yes. Right, so let's try again. This is a bit fiddly, so it could be frustrating and a bit slow to watch. But then we've got one of these tools, which I need to um, take this apart, as you can see. 
and then before I put it into this something that can sometimes help let this grip is use a bit of valve grinding paste just put a bit of that on the pipe or in there so it just gives it a bit of help to grip the pipe and stop it from sliding out and then as far as I'm aware like I said I've not used this kind of tool on here before but you clamp that until that is level with that end piece there so I put one side on and then I put the other side on and then we put the bolts in which I can't reach And now that is tight onto the, um, I'm hoping, not expecting, but hoping. And now I'm getting really fed up with getting brake fluid all down my fucking arm and everything. But I'm hoping it should just be a case of screwing this in. Now this end is for the fleur, that end is for the olive. Um, on the steel I'm doing the female fleur, so I need to tighten that into there. Nice and lovingly. And it appears that I've actually, yes, it appears that I've put the pipe too far in. So let's adjust that. All right, what I've done now is I've slid that through there until it's touching that with that much gap. So hopefully when I tighten that up, that'll give me the right amount of flow. But in all honesty, like I said before, I've actually no idea because I've never used one of these tools before. So we'll find out together. This feels a bit too easy, so it's not actually doing anything. You're probably just sliding the tool off the end of the fucking pipe, which would just be well sick. I suspect that might be what it's doing. Because that does not feel... It doesn't feel like it's done anything. So let's check. Let's check this out. Let's have a look in the end of it. See, moment of truth, as it worked. Actually, you know what? That's probably about right. That is fucking stuck on there a little bit. But... Again. Well, yeah, it seems to have flowed it, but it also seems that that has now become part of the pipe. So I need to uh, try and get that off without breaking anything, which could prove more difficult than it sounds. Back in, hell. And I dare say that that might actually be okay. So, if I put that back into there, now all I need to do is make a piece of copper, sorry, to link that to that. As we, as we can see, nice and, nice and clearly now. So let's do that. And this is the stuff in question. I have to say that so far, I'm really impressed with that. I mean, I borrowed that off a mate, but I think I'm gonna have to buy one of them. Right, so now I need to make this copper pipe, and I need to make a very precise measurement. So, if we say it needs to be about that long, and then about that long again, and that makes it, About the ish. Which is somewhere around here. And then once we've got a piece of brake pipe cut to the precise length, we use a professional deburring tool. Um, like I said before, it is better if you've got um, an actual pipe cutter, but I ain't got one of them, so the mate do with this shit. And now 
let's try and make a different type of olive. If you notice, I've put that to the, actually it's a little bit far that, but I put it to where the threads start because I think that's where I put it last time and it seemed to work. Even though it was a different type of olive and what have you, or a different type of fitting or a different type of flow, whatever you want to call it, it still worked. So let's do it in the same place. Now, if you're doing this with a closed end, you always need to put them on first, but obviously this, I can, I can put that on in a minute. So let's tighten that up. Like so, and then I'm gonna use that end. So I need to screw that into there. And this is gonna require two ones, but as you can imagine, you know, I'm not gonna be able to film this bit, so you'll just have to use your imagination. But I'm gonna hold that with one hand and I'm gonna turn this with the spanner using the other hand. And once we have completed that task, it leaves us with an olive on the end of it like this. And then I put one of them on it and then put another one of them on it. And then I put an olive on that end, the same as what I've just done with that end. And as if by magic, I've now got a link pipe that I should screw into the fittings at each end. So first, I'm going to put that end in and tighten it up with my fingers. Also known as finger tight. And then, once I've got that to something like that, and this, being careful not to kink it until it fits into into there, and then just in case of lining that one up and shit it. I say it's just a case of, but it's like a little bit fiddly with one hand, but you can picture what I'm trying to do. Yes. And then simply, I'm just tightening this up with a 10 millimeter spanner, or a 3 8 I think it is, if I remember right. 3 8 some sort of imperial shit size for 10 mil. And then that needs to be tight, but not mega tight. It needs to be, I'd say, about, about that tight. And then this one, well this one's a 10 mil and and due to lack of preparation, um, mole grip size is actually a 30 millimeter but I can't find a 30 millimeter spanner so I just have to hold it with that shitter. And once again, that needs to be about I'd say about this sort of tightness about there. So now it should just be a case of topping it up with brake fluid and bleeding the shitter up. Nice and carefully fill this up until it is full. Yes. And as you can see, the bleed nipple is there, and it is an 8mm, but I suspect I might have to warm. Yeah, I'm going to have to warm that up in the same way as we did before with the pipes. Nice and careful. Try again. Very carefully. And before I try and bleed it up, I'm actually fully removed the bleed nipple to make sure that in fact it's not blocked up. So now I've established that, I shall put it back in. Nice and carefully. 
And then next, I'm going to attach this to the bleed nipple. But first, I need to get that with enough fluid into it so that line is full of fluid. Like so. And then, I attach this onto the bleed nipple. Nice and carefully, eh? A bit awkward as fuck, but... And then I want that to actually be pointing upwards from the bleed nipple, if possible. So I'm going to take it over the top of the wheel, I think. Yes. So now, I don't know if you can see what I'm trying to do, but that bleed nipple is undone slightly. That is full of fluid. I'm going to press that a couple of times, and I'm going to try and leave the phone pointing at that to see if you can see. It's a bit cloudy, but might be able to see um, some bubbles coming through it and that should extend that's if everything goes to plan which it probably won't so i'm going to try and balance this shitter in a location where we can see what's going on i don't know if that actually showed anything but now i'm going to try tightening this up and we can see that it has pushed that through and we have got some lovely clean fluid that's come through and we have a brake pedal that actually feels all right so as long as we haven't got any leaks which it appears that we don't have any leaks leaking it's leaking no not got any leaks so that seems that we have actually finished this task obviously i will give it a test drive and make sure the brakes feel as they should do um, but the brake pedal feels as hard as it ever has so i'm pretty happy with that so i'll just explain the process a little bit of the uh the bleeding so this is just something it's not really like a what would we say an, an authentic uh, method as such this is just something i've made up but if you attach say this you know clear tube and a syringe with some brake fluid to it to a bleed nipple and you make sure that it's full of fluid and it's pointing upwards so any air bubbles go upwards as you see that's got loads of air in it that's come out the brake system and so is the fluid and then you just pump it a few times and what it'll do is it'll push the air out and hopefully it won't suck any air back in it's sort of like the old milk bottle trick but it's just a way I've developed it further and I use that method quite a lot and it helps me out um, so anyway, that's uh, hopefully, unless like, uh, unless they're still not right on a test drive, it that should be it for this one. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the usual shit. Check out the other videos um, and so on. And uh, see you next time.